Hi, hello World Wide Web. I'm Becker Shadow, the internet personality with the best chair. It's comfortable, reclines, it's got hidden compartments and lights, and best of all, it hasn't killed anybody yet. Oh, and the cup holders. Which is not what you can say about the subject of today's movie, Killer Sofa. Yes, Killer Sofa. Unsurprisingly, this is a horror movie, but the twist is that the killer is a sentient chair with murderous tendencies. Well, technically, a sofa is defined as having at least two seats, but this thing does kill. <laughs> oh boy, does it kill. In Killer Sofa, the killer recliner is possessed by an evil spirit and proceeds to kill people. But why? Well, that's all down to an ancient evil curse, familial ties, witchcraft, that sort of thing. It seems the story of sadistic seating is a lot more serious than one would surmise at first glance. Or not. I mean, it's, it's Killer Sofa. Anyway, let's take a look at Killer Sofa and see just how cursed it really is. Our story opens up with a mysterious man wielding a power saw who gets to work on a hapless individual tied down, unable to move. <coughs> He's doing about as well as the channel right now. Moving on, we see that three individuals have made their way to the rented storage full of skulls and evil. And of course, an ominous armchair. And hastily scrawled delivery instructions. Yeah, we're just gonna ignore that whole dismemberment thing. For now. Because we gotta jump over to the opening credits where we are introduced to Francesca, played by Pimeo May, doing a dance for a band. This rather drastically segues over to her being confronted by Detective Gravy, played by Jed Brophy, and his partner, Detective Grape, played by Stacey King. It seems the dismembered dude from the opening was Frederico, played by Harley Neville, and was an acquaintance of Francesca. Also of note, the band manager, Francesca's friend, Maxie, played by Nathalie Morris, is also an acquaintance in this little web. So what's up? The neighbor found his dog playing with a human foot. It's how we identified the remains. Kind of like a reverse Cinderella. But how closely acquainted were these two? And not much recently. Francesca filed for a restraining order on the guy two years prior because he was way too into her. Like, dangerously so. And it's a problem she's got, you see? Guy meets her and they just become obsessed? Anyway, gotta go. Got a recliner being delivered today. Something about her, isn't there? I can see why they went crazy. I don't know, she's got that deer in the headlights expression of a lot of our protagonists in these B-grade horror movies. But where is the recliner? At the wrong address! Fortunately, it had to be signed for, and Rabbi Jack here, played by Jim Baltax, ain't the Francesca they're looking for, so they go elsewhere. But first, Jack realizes that there is something strange about the furniture, and upon touching it, he sees terrifying visions of a woman screaming and running in the woods. But no worries, the delivery driver can resuscitate him, and we can forget about that whole ordeal. It must have been the heat. Now, go. Yeah, I'm just sensing a terrifying evil out of this thing you got here, but there ain't no reason to slow you down. You're late for delivery already, remember? But with Francesca, Maxie has given her a ride home so we can be introduced to her boyfriend, TJ, played by Jordan Rivers. Francesca says she likes him because unlike other guys, he's not obsessively clingy about their relationship. You know he's gay, right? Well, if you were the significant other of the woman that the entire town is fighting over, wouldn't you be happy to? Anyway, he can help bring the new recliner in while she can do some drugs! Just your standard anti-psychotics your horror movie characters take like candy. But TJ cannot stay. He's got responsibilities with miscellaneous friends we never see. So let's hop back over to Rabbi Jack's, where he confides with Ashanti, played by Angelica Thomas, that the sofa must have been possessed by a dimmock! You sure it was a debuck? Yes. Yeah, and a strong one as well. From Hebrew legend, it's an evil spirit that possesses the living. Which makes it really hard to explain how it got into a recliner, but don't think about it too much. The important thing is that we're watching a movie called Killer Sofa. And that night, when Francesca reclines upon the recliner... Damn it! 
I guess she likes her chair even more than I like mine. But it was all just a dream! Hey, does that make this better or worse? But what to do about the Dibbuk? Why, check YouTube, of course! It just so happens that Tohunga Makuto, played by Grant Karima, has an entire playlist dedicated to detailing how to deal with Dibbuks. First thing to remember is never touch it. Well, shit. Long story short, a Dibbuk will fuck you up if you're not in perfect health, physically and mentally. So let's see how our lady in antipsychotics is doing. Not bad, she wakes up to find a trail of candles leading to tea and cookies. Certain this was the work of her loving boyfriend, she showers him with affection. While he stands there confused, but not about to turn down praise, or free cookies. I was really sad about Frederico, you know. I even had nightmares. Okay. But what's this? It has shifted the cookies slightly to the left. Pure evil. Back with the investigation, though, Detective Gravy has a shocking revelation. Frederico had a YouTube channel. Not only that, he specialized in dark topics, like a cold stuff and the body count rising. Surely a huge red flag. Francesca waves it off, though. The guy was just a weirdo. She had nothing to do with any of that. But while she's off being interrogated, TJ is back at home. Alone. But with the recliner! Ah! And so it attacks, taking advantage of the fact that this man for some reason did not know that when you're using the oven, you actually have to close the door at some point. Now wait a minute. You know, chances are the recliner actually saved his life here as this results in him calling for help. And when everyone arrives, they find the place filled with smoke and TJ in the tub, his leg bleeding all over the place. So uh, yeah, not exactly a normal situation, but if it weren't for the recliner, that house would have burnt down. But TJ needs to recover and as such is going to be staying with his mother three doors down. Mom! 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 Rita, played by Adrian Kohler, seen here with an actual sofa and considering the body count of the recliner thus far. So she can't hear his calls to help him get water to wash down his pain pills, or to hear his screams of terror when he realizes that the recliner that attacked him is sneaking around outside his home. <laughs> leaving him at the mercy of the chair. You know, inaccurate or not, Killer Sofa does have a much better ring to it. As such, the killer sofa kills him! Right in time for us to switch over to more Dibbuk trivia with the rabbi. Seems they eat people, and it's kinda nasty. Those who have come across a Dibbuk feeding speak of a lingering putrid smell of burnt flesh in the air. And man, that goes stank! But this is just a little refresher lesson before Ashanti gives him a little spirit guide to the point he first touched the killer sofa, just to grab more details than he could make out before. Seems there was a poisoned tea, and another woman who found this hysterical lady fleeing in the woods from the angry mob that wants her dead! So they grab the knife and... <coughs> hey, just say fuck it and leave. So they still don't know what this is all about, but it's bad. Whoever has that recliner is in great danger. <laughs> I'm in danger! But what's this? Francesca awakens to find panties strewn on the floor, which lead to a panty sniffer who scurries off. Following, she finds an open window and... Nothing on the other side, so no bother. It must have been the wind. <sighs> but it was all just a dream! Again! But just to be sure, she gets up and checks her apartment. Balcony door, check. Kitchen table, check. Sentient recliner, check. Well, that's enough to get her to call Maxie up and get out of there at once. Why didn't you go to TJ's? I rang the doorbell and nobody answered. Or at least get out of there eventually. And for only a short while, as while Francesca heads over to Maxie's place to spend the night, by next morning she's back at her apartment just long enough to get a text from Detective Gravy to come down to the station at once. However... Hey, Francesca. Uh, Ralph! She runs right into Ralph, played by James Kane. And, well, like many B-movie actors, he doesn't exactly have a great many roles under his belt, but he did voice Al Hisman in Path of Exile. 
That's got to be worth something. He's the only conqueror to do chaos damage. And chaos is quite the motif here, as Ralph just so happens to be one of Francesca's clingy, obsessive exes. Talking like they're still together, and speaking of the fine, strong breeding stock the two of them would be. Naturally, she tells him to go fuck himself sideways and leaves. But after she's out of sight, he uses his Mr. Fantastic powers to unlock the door through the mail slot and enter her domain. Ensuring that if you didn't catch his name, it's not really going to matter that much in a couple of minutes. But they do take the time to reinforce it regardless. Detective Gravy calls Maxie down to the station to assist Francesca in the news of the horrifying death of TJ. Who could have done such a thing? Well, obviously the creeper we were just introduced to, Ralph! Well, that's it then. If Ralph probably killed TJ, then he probably killed Frederico as well. Because come on, how many other assholes could they have possibly convinced to act in this movie? However, Ralph is currently milling about Francesca's home, checking the status of certain appliances, changing batteries, that sort of thing, before he goes off into the bedroom for... Now, oh, hell, am I really not going to say it because YouTube might be upset? When is YouTube happy? That's the question. The point is the killer sofa smashes his head in with a clothes iron. Which, if it was in frame, might have at least been interesting, but, you know, you gotta understand, it is kind of hard to show that when it makes absolutely no physical sense whatsoever. Thing is, the police believe Francesca and Maxie may be in danger, so they grab a hotel room to stay for the night. Francesca just wants to go home, but Maxie tells her to stay put. She's gonna go check up on Grandpa. I'll be back soon. Maxie, do you mind just passing through mine and seeing if the recline is okay? You know, honestly, I'd be very upset if the one time I actually decide to leave my house, I come back and somebody stole my fucking chair. So Maxie is tasked with recliner duty. But what's this? The detective has just found out that very seat was in fact in Frederico's lair. Even better, Maxie does head over to Graham's first and they tell her the recliner is evil. A killer sofa even, possessed by a dibbock. Therefore, she must retrieve it at once. Stay with him, Ashanti. I'll go. Oh, no, 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 it's too dangerous. Which she must do all by her lonesome meaning that she ends up all alone with the killer sofa. A situation that she was heading straight for anyway, making that entire scene completely pointless. As she doesn't even get a chance to roll the dolly up to the thing before she witnesses the recliner disposing of Ralph's body. And it witnesses her witnessing it! Like, hey, what are you looking at? So she must run! Fleeing into the bathroom, it attempts to follow. So with nowhere to go, she opens a window and doesn't safely climb down the easy, grippable pipes right there. <laughs> no, why do that when you can leap off the second story into a bin full of glass bottles that shatter, shredding your body, leaving you hidden from any who might offer aid? This means that when the detectives reach Francesca, she's in a state of panic. Maxie left two hours ago and has not returned. As such, they head to Francesca's apartment, trying to figure out where she ran off to. Searching the grounds, the detectives discover the remains of Ralph. And even worse. The killer sofa can talk! Of all things, guys, you, you do realize that some of the best slasher movie killers out there are human beings who never say a word. Thus, Francesca decides to say fuck it and leave, fleeing her home and driving the fuck out of there. Looks like she's going for the big fuck it and leave, heading to the cliffs of yet another subject matter we got a pussyfoot around like we're not all watching this video while being around 40 years old. Eh, it doesn't matter anyway. Rabbi Jack calls her up like, hey, I got a plot to exposit that sofa, possessed by a dibbock. So it called you Val, huh? Well, just so happens that Valerie was a demonic soul eater, along with her partner, Gerard, way back in the 1800s. Seems Valerie was obsessed over by all, and that her soul is somewhere in Francesca. Gerard, however, is in the chair. But something's still not right here. You see, a Dybbuk always needs a human body to, to, to cling to. Ah, that's not all that weird. Check the previous owners. Maybe that particular sofa came from the collection of Ed Gein. But now they know, and knowing is half the battle. The other half is the, uh, you know, the battle. How do you beat a ghost? 
Well, with a ghost trap, of course. Jack posits that they could whip up a couple handy-dandy ghost traps and bust them real good. Wait a minute. Dimmick boxes are real? Or, you know, part of the mythology, at least. And here, I thought everything was just based off of 80s comedies. Anyway, 20 minutes of movie left. Better establish important parts real fast. Gravy is obsessed with Francesca. But it turns out that Grape is in love with Gravy. I'm sure that was riveting to the dozen of you out there who cared. More importantly, the rabbi is having a heart attack. Not to worry, Francesca knows just what to do. Take the Dybbuk box and head out to save the day. Oh, but wait, we never explained the opening, did we? <laughs> well, not to worry, because it just so happens that the man who dismembered Federico has decided to turn himself in. Warren, played by Sean Fleming. And yeah, dismembered specifically. He maintains that the guy paid him to cut off his legs, but that's it. He left him alive. But why? He wasn't all there. He was you, somewhere else. You better give us something soon, Warren. Hey, I think it's perfectly reasonable to say that if a guy paid someone to hack off their legs... He was probably just nutsos in the buttsos. Also, hey, Francesca's ex bugged her apartment. The camera feed shows Detective Grape that the recliner is alive. Not to fear, for Francesca is here to defeat it. Get in the box. Shoot. Not that she's particularly effective at that, but I mean, she is fighting a chair, so... Nevertheless, she pours gasoline all over it and lights a match, which it blows out. And yeah, we've been over how gasoline fumes work. The fact that it's a chair defeating her in this battle of wits is the least of the scene's problems. But is it really a chair? For when it stands up and comes toward her, we see that this is where Frederico has been all along, inside the killer sofa. But wait! <laughs> Okay, okay, so he, he, he cut off his legs to fit inside the sofa because that's so much easier than just sitting cross-legged all that time. Uh, but, uh, why exactly did he cut off his face? So that's that. The killer sofa is defeated. Maxie climbs out of the trash can, huge chunk of glass sticking out of his skull, and no one shows even the slightest bit of concern. Maxie! Where have you been? Seriously, they treat her no different than if she had just stepped out of frame for 15 minutes. And we can all put this terrible ordeal behind us. Or can we? Francesca decides, eh, gonna keep that sofa. Maybe invite gravy over for tea. Poison tea! For you see, the dimmick that needed a body to inhabit and not an object who was in fact not inhabiting the body, no, but the object! And when Gravy dies from tea poisoning, the dimmick inhabiting the object can now inhabit his body! Don't try to make sense of it. Point is, Francesca is now Valerie, Gravy is now Gerard, and Grape is now dead! Not to worry, Maxie can call for help. But the recliner is still possessed by the Dimmock! Somehow! I don't know. I have no clue. It's just one of those movie monsters that has whatever power is needed for the plot at the time, and we needed some sequel bait here. Anyway, that, that, that... was Killer Sofa. Why do I keep seeking these out? I'll give it this much, Killer Sofa did go above and beyond what I expected out of the acting and presentation going into this movie. It's still a movie about a chair that kills people, and clearly a low-budget one at that, but the cinematography, acting, and overall look of the flick come off like they really put their all into this production. About a chair that kills people. There is no escaping that the movie is Killer Sofa, except perhaps when you get down to the nitty-gritty as to exactly how the so-called sofa goes about doing its killing. Mostly magical powers and the occasional weapon lying around the house. It really doesn't lean into the fact that it's a killer chair movie. The spirit could be possessing anything at that point. This could be a killer coffee table, or a killer desk lamp. Or 
Well, that might make it hard to jam a corpse inside those examples, but I believe the point still stands. The pacing is also a bit hit and miss. We do have build-up and mysterious aspects that are explored more in depth the farther we get into the movie, but we also have explanations that just slide in out of left field, and an ending that really doesn't make sense just as a means to make it as bad for the characters as possible. I like a horror movie ending on a bad ending if it is the logical conclusion, but no explanation as to why the Dybbuk boxes did diddly, changing the rules as to what it can or cannot possess, and oh yeah, let's just pop out a spare evil spirit for the finale, just for funsies. At the end of the day, Killer Sofa is trash cinema doing its best to put on a pretty face. Hats off to the actors and filmmakers for doing their best to put together a serious flick, but when you break it all down, it's still Killer Sofa. Coming in at three, but it was all just a dreams! Out of five. Could have been better, could have been a lot worse. You've seen the trash I watch. Thank you all for watching. I have been Decker Shadow. And remember, don't hack off your limbs. She's really not worth it. I'll call for help. <gasps> and what other movies have I reviewed about killer sofas? Oh, wait, that's right, none. Uh, ooh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space that has the word killer in the title. I reviewed that. You can check it out right there. Or the algorithmically selected recommended video. I don't know if any of that matters anymore. Who cares? It's all burning down. Let's just smile while it does. Yeah.